How do you catch a customer's attention amidst a sea of similar products? You have to appeal to their hearts, not their minds. Make an emotional connection that stays with them over time. Because at the end of the day, the product doesn't even matter if you send the right messenger. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of General Mills Monster Cereals. Thank you to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. Click the link in the description below to get $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress, plus two free pillows today. I don't know about you, but I have to sleep every single day or I get so tired that I can't stay awake. It's a fact, if you don't choose to get some sleep to rest, eventually your body will make that decision for you with no regard to your busy schedule. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs and shipped right to your door. Everybody, everybody is different and Helix knows that. They made the sleep quiz to match your unique body type and sleep preferences to make the perfect mattress for you. Personally, I'm a side sleeper. I like a medium firmness in a mattress, and based on my results, Helix matched me with their Helix Midnight Luxe, awarded CNET's 2022 Best Mattress for Couples. What I like most about the Helix Sleep Mattress is that it features luxury memory foam for pressure point relief on my hips and shoulders. It's not too firm, not too soft at the top of the mattress, and it's perfect for couples with different feel preferences. I've had mattresses with springs that stick in your back, mattresses that are too thick in the middle or worse, sag after just a few weeks of sleeping on them. This isn't that. This is a mattress made just for me and the comfort I'm looking for. You can easily shop for your new Helix Sleep mattress from the comfort of your own home, confident in your purchase because with Helix Sleep you get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty. There are financing options and flexible payment plans. If it makes you nervous to buy something you haven't tried, you get more than three months to make sure that you love it. If you don't, they'll pick it up for you and you'll get a full refund. The best part about all of this is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the U.S. It comes rolled up in a box and is super easy to set it up yourself. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click on the link below or go to helixsleep.com toygalaxy for up to $200 off your Helix Sleep mattress, plus two free pillows today. Thanks again to Helix Sleep. General Mills Monster Cereals were first sold in 1971. They quickly established themselves with beloved brand characters that stood out not only for their originality, but for their infamy. They didn't scare the shit out of kids, but they did change the way you looked at it. Breakfast cereal as we know it got its start in the late 1800s. The volume of manufacturing and pace of innovation increased into the early 1900s. From granola to cornflakes to puffed rice, the product was evolving and expanding to meet customer needs and a highly competitive market. More importantly, the way it was sold also evolved through the 1920s and 30s as manufacturers partnered with celebrities to promote their products. As selection expanded, different products could be targeted to different demographics with different celebrities, different flavors, or other incentives in and on the packaging. Brand characters have been around as long as print has existed. In 1933, Snap, Crackle, and Pop laid the foundation for the serial characters that we know today. Tony the Tiger joined them in 1952, followed by the Trix Rabbit in 1959. Things really took off in the 1960s as technology reached a point where 90% of U.S. households owned at least one television. Color television broadcast became the market standard in the mid-60s along with rituals like Saturday morning cartoons for kids. 1963 saw the introduction of Cap'n Crunch and Toucan Sam, and in 1964 General Mills found success with Lucky the Leprechaun and his Lucky Charms, hyping up their new mini marshmallow technology, a paradigm shift in kids' cereal design. Look. Tasty cereal wasn't enough. Brightly colored, high in sugar, everybody had that. Colorful mini marshmallows were good, but General Mills continued to push. The next step was to literally transform the contents of the bowl into something else. Their scientists had developed chocolate and strawberry flavoring that would not only be infused into the oats and grains, but the mini marshmallows and ultimately the milk added to the bowl, creating chocolate or strawberry flavored milk as a byproduct of eating the cereal. To stand out in the kids' cereal industry, you needed a gimmick for the cereal itself and for the face on the box. By the late 1960s, everybody had a cartoon character salesperson. General Mills needed something that would excite six-year-olds who had already seen everything a cereal mascot had to offer. 
They tasked their marketing team, an agency called Dancer Fitzgerald Sample, with a mission, create a pair of mascots that would bring these two new brands to life as they conduct a dual launch into the breakfast cereal market. These characters were as important to the launch as the cereal itself. In 1969, Laura Levine was one of the people responsible for coming up with ideas at Dancer Fitzgerald. With Tony the Tiger and Captain Crunch as the models for what made a successful cereal mascot, she made a list of famous duos and tried to imagine them through a chocolate and strawberry lens. Her list ran the gamut of history and pop culture, but the pair that stood out to her boss was the pair that drew inspiration from classic movie monsters. The names she came up with were Count Chocula and Frankenberry, parodies of Count Dracula and Frankenstein's monster, Frankenstein. As she recalled in a 2021 interview with MelMagazine.com, quote, Monsters may have been in the zeitgeist of the time, but they weren't in my zeitgeist. I knew about Boris Karloff as Frankenstein and Bela Lugosi as Dracula, but I'd never watched the monsters. I was just playing off two established movie characters that I knew about. Whether she intended to tap into the monster vein or not, she did. Monsters were big at the time. The classic Universal monster movies had been regular television broadcasts from 1960 through 1964, introducing them to a whole new generation in the comfort of their own homes. That popularity inspired the creation of television shows for both The Munsters and The Addams Family in 1964. By 1969, the monster craze had faded, but their cultural impact was still real and valuable. No other cereal brands had tapped the monster genre, mariners, talking animals, elves, yes, but nothing that resonated with the same cultural cash as movie monsters. The names and concepts for Count Chocula and Frankenberry were handed off to the art department at Dancer Fitzgerald. George Karn, Bill Tolis, and Bill Melendez brought them to life visually. Karn and Tolis had already worked on brand characters for General Mills like the Trix Rabbit. Melendez was an animator and director that had worked for Disney and Warner Brothers. He also created his own production company, Bill Melendez Productions, who were responsible for the Peanuts specials like A Charlie Brown Christmas. General Mills liked the concept and the characters, but it would be two years of refinement before they felt like the campaign was ready for television. Rounding the sharp edges of the horror icons, getting the script just right. They wanted fun scary, not scary scary. The first commercial for the brands featured both characters together arguing about whose cereal was better. A codependent relationship that would continue for years to come. Count Chocula's Chocolate Sweeties for monstrous chocolate flavor, or Frankenberry's Berry-flavored Sweeties for monstrous strawberry flavor. The visuals were a mix of the animated characters interacting with live-action cereal until they are interrupted by a passing child that frightens both of them, a key element of the campaign to reassure kids that there's nothing to be afraid of. Count Chocula was voiced by Jim Duke as Frankenberry was played by Bob McFadden, who would go on to voice dozens of familiar cartoon characters over the years, including Snarf on Thundercats, likely part of the reason that Larry Kenny, the voice of lion -O, took over the role of Count Chocula after Jim Dukas retired. General Mills were trailblazers. They created a product with elements that had never been featured in a kid's cereal before. From the monsters on the box to specific formulation of their chocolate and strawberry flavors and the dyes that gave them their color. However, just a few weeks after the launch, strange reports of children being hospitalized began to surface. Patients didn't appear to be in pain, but something was wrong. Something was happening inside them. In February of 1972, a 12-year-old boy was brought to the outpatient department after passing pink stools for two days, unassociated with abdominal pain or other symptoms. The doctor stated that the stool samples were somewhat loose and looked like strawberry ice cream. <laughs> Believing that the child might be experiencing internal bleeding, the boy was admitted for examination and testing. His overall condition was unremarkable. All efforts to determine the cause of the rose-colored gases proved futile until it was noted that the boy had eaten Frankenberry cereal two consecutive days prior to the admitting incident. The following day, the boy's deposits had returned to normal color, at which time the doctors tested their theory by feeding him nothing but Frankenberry cereal until his extrusions once again turned pink. Relieved, they alerted other hospitals to the condition in a report called Benign Red Pigmentation of Stool Resulting from Food Coloring in a New Breakfast Cereal, the Frankenberry Stool. It is because of doctors and heroic patients like that boy that we hear in the future, know that certain food coloring dyes, while otherwise harmless, do have side effects. Neither red number two nor red number three can be broken down by the human digestive system, so they pass through unaltered. While they are harmless, they can mask other potentially dangerous conditions and therefore are now subject to government regulation. The entire exercise was repeated in December of that same year as booberry was introduced and the blue diet used resulted in green pigmentation. Count Chocula is excused from these regulatory concerns 
For obvious reasons. I may have gone too far in a few places. I get a charge from my delicious strawberry flavored cereal Frankenberry. Here's a switch. My ghostly good blueberry with blueberry flavored marshmallows to spark up breakfast. I love Frankenberry strawberry flavored marshmallows. You turn me off, Frankenface. Piffle Berry Boo. I'm in the dark. Me too. Me three. Oh. <laughs> you can enjoy this nutritious breakfast with blueberry. Frankenberry. Boo Berry joined Count Chocula and Frankenberry on television in 1973. Veteran voice actor Paul Fries based the character on actor Peter Lorre. In 1974, a fourth member, Fruit Brute, a wolfman in colorful overalls, was added to the group, pushing the limits of how far the concept could go. Fruit Brute didn't do as well as the three previous serials, possibly due to oversaturation of the gimmick, possibly due to the character not being as iconic as Dracula and Frankenstein, possibly because fruit wasn't as distinct a flavor as chocolate, strawberry, or blueberry. Is it cantaloupe? No. Despite the box and commercials calling it simply fruit flavored, some have said it was distinctly lime. Hard to say for sure as the original formula was discontinued in 1982, the roster of monsters would go back to three for the next six years. In 1987, monster cereals ran into their second media controversy. It started as a marketing crossover that finally paired Count Chocula and Frankenberry with their inspirations, Dracula and Frankenstein, in commercials and as part of the box art. The campaign added a new tagline for the commercials, how about a monster for breakfast today? For real. If anything, it showed just how different the serial versions were from the Lugosi and Karloff versions, and how scared the cartoon monsters were when faced by the real thing as opposed to being scary themselves. The boxes for the serial featured Count Chocula and Frankenberry each running away from the real Dracula and Frankenstein, a clever, seemingly long overdue homage to those characters. It is likely that kids would not have noticed any issue with the images on the boxes. The controversy came from the medallion worn by Dracula, traditionally an ornate six-pointed sunburst with detailed engraving surrounded by stars and crescent moons. For some reason, it was clearly replaced with a medallion that looked like a Star of David. This was a real concern to members of the Jewish community as, according to an article on MASH.com, it echoed anti-Semitic middle-aged concepts of blood libel which, quote, accused Jews of killing Christians and using their blood for rituals such as making matzah for Passover. General Mills apologized for the artwork but refused to recall the boxes despite protests. Possibly as an attempt to bounce back, Yummy Mummy was introduced in 1988. Like Fruit Brute before, it was sold as fruit-flavored cereal, but with vanilla marshmallows, this time by a mummy covered with wrappings reminiscent of fruit-striped gum and with the added innovation of big yummy marshmallows. So big, they're monster mallows. Yummy Mummy was discontinued in 1992, making it seem like the original three were the only ones destined for any long-term success. Even with appearances in 1992's Reservoir Dogs and 1994's Pulp Fiction, Fruit Brute remained in the cereal graveyard. The end of the millennium almost saw another roster expansion. With sales declining, there was an idea to re-energize the brand with a new flavor or a new character or something to mix things up and generate some excitement. Peter Bregman was an art director and copywriter who volunteered to take on the project of potentially developing the new character. A fan of Universal Monsters himself, he drew upon his own love for the genre to come up with something that fit the tone of the existing characters. After a quarter of a century with five male characters, he wanted to try introducing a female character. For Mixed Berry, he thought it made sense to try out Bride of Frankenberry. If General Mills didn't go for that, perhaps Berry Patra. If they wanted another dude, Dr. Jekyllberry or Phantom Berry might work. Despite his love and passion for the project, General Mills opted to not proceed with the new character, an unfortunate development which Bregman called one of the biggest disappointments of his career. In 2004, the recipe for the monster cereals was changed. Previously made from oats and rice, the future was all about corn. A loss for longtime fans as the original flavor was abandoned to time. In 2010, after years of market dormancy, a new style guide was produced by General Mills advertising partner Pat Mann Studios. The idea was to bring these characters back to prominence and use them in ways that they had never been used before. Pat Mann Studios founders Manny Galan and Pat Giles believe that the General Mills monsters were important pop culture icons who could do more than just smile on a cereal box. They could smile on any number of products across the spectrum of media and merchandising. As Galan put it, quote, The monsters are incredibly powerful characters that feature the wonderful combination that kids love, comedy and horror. They resonate with the consumer because they see themselves in them. 
These struggles, weaknesses, and character behaviors are wonderfully human and something we all can relate to. You might not be aware of it while you're watching these commercials, but subconsciously your brain is. They're the Marvel Universe of mascot characters. They opened the style guide up for free and the licensing opportunities poured in. That same year, Betty Crocker released Frankenberry and Booberry fruit roll-ups, and General Mills introduced Count Chocula cereal bars. That was also the year that the monster cereals became limited time seasonal offerings. Times change, marketing strategies shift based on consumer purchasing patterns, and it became clear to General Mills that they could sell the same amount of product during a two-month window around Halloween as they could if the cereals were on the shelves year-round. Three years later, dreams came true when all five monster cereals were on the shelf at the same time for the first time ever. Special retro box versions were exclusive to Target, updated artwork and character models and flavors. Yummy Mummy was now distinctly orange creamsicle and Fruit Brute traded lime for cherry. Fruit Brute was also now Fruit Brute, F-R-U-T-E instead of F-R-U-I-T due to legal concerns as to what constituted the legal threshold of fruit flavor. Seasonal releases and character redesigns and refreshments became standard operating procedure. In 2014, the monsters were reimagined by comic book artists from DC Comics, Count Chocula by Terry Dodson, Frankenberry by Dave Johnson, and Booberry by Jim Lee. In 2021, the monsters got the Marvel Universe treatment that Manny Galan dreamed about in 2010. A new Monster Mash serial hit shelves with retro box deco and character designs reminiscent of George Karn and Bill Tolis's originals. While it would have been adventurous of General Mills to simply pour all five cereals into the box as might a child, they opted to deliver a berry-flavored frosted cereal with monster marshmallows. Guess you'll have to do it yourself. The Monster Cereals, Count Chocula, Frankenberry, and Booberry present The Monsters Go Disco. Monster cereals had a variety of merchandise produced over the years, not the least of which was the inbox premiums. Things like disguise kits, beach towels, iron-ons, transfers, figurines, posters. In 1979, you could actually get playable records featuring audio adventures like The Monsters Go Disco or Monster Adventures in Outer Space. There were plush dolls, vinyl toys, 3D glasses, pencil toppers. Each time a new collectible fad arises in pop culture, the monsters tend to find their way on board. Funko has licensed the characters for pops, mystery minis, wacky wobblers, soda figures, Pez dispensers, watches! In 2021, Jada Toys released six inch Count Chocula and Frankenberry action figures with packaging that looked like the original cereal boxes. Each figure came with an alternate head and a smaller replica of their respective cereal boxes. No word on Booberry, Fruit Brute, or Yummy Mummy. Jada Toys is also bringing the monsters to their 124th scale line of die cast cars. As of this video, you can pre order a 1959 Cadillac Coupe de Ville to dig through the ditches and burn through the witches with a PVC figure of Count Chocula. For kids that grew up with the General Mills monster cereals from the beginning, they are a nostalgic callback to a more innocent time when a nutritious balanced breakfast meant a bowl full of sugary chocolate milk, when purchasing decisions were based on the prize inside and the playground street cred endowed by the cartoon character on the box. Today, they are part of an annual tradition, like the return of pumpkin spice, part of the celebration of autumn and the Halloween season, and indulgence in sweet treats and saccharine horror. They are monsters that appeal to our stomachs and our hearts, monsters that make us smile while we make breakfast. <laughs> we got it all in. Thanks for watching. Please hit like and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, if you would like early access to the videos ad-free, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy and let us know in the comments down below if you've tried the monster cereals, which is your favorite. I've never actually eaten any of the monster cereals, which I realize is hard to believe, that is hard to believe. but it's true. The closest I ever got was Lucky Charms, which I did eat, going on streaks of eating every day for weeks at a time. To my knowledge, it never changed the color of my number twos, but I will admit that I was not vigilant about conducting that investigation. <laughs> I, I don't always check to see what color it is. You should. Even though, even the, even though you're colorblind, you definitely should. How will I know? <laughs> Kate, come in here and check this for me. <laughs> God.